Why visitors are scared of driving in Japan. Fellow explorers, we are in the Fuji Five Lakes region today, and you know, we often get rental cars when we come to Japan, but a lot of my fellow travelers tell me they don't want to rent a car because they're scared of driving. And so having driven around for this week on this trip, I wanted to share with you some of the things that I think are most challenging and perhaps most scary about driving in Japan and ways you could overcome them when you come. And so it's not that the actual like driving itself is that scary. I mean, driving itself, I think, is is pretty easy. The roads are mostly well paved, well marked. Um, the highways are wide and easy to go on. The hardest part is actually navigating. Uh, the streets in Japan, basically none of them are straight. They all curve in some variety of directions, sometimes in and of themselves, sometimes off the highway to just make a left turn on the highway. You end up doing like a figure eight type circle and relate to the road not being straight. You also can't just find, you know, A Street and turn right on First Street because many of the streets, in fact, don't even have names. Um, like, not that they don't have English names. They don't have Japanese names either. They're just not named. The way a lot of navigation occurs is, you know, turn left after the 7-Eleven and then turn right at the 100 yen shop. And so the Japanese car-based navigation systems do a lot better on that than, say, Google Maps does because the in-car, say, Toyota navigation in this Toyota Corolla will pull up all the different landmarks so you know exactly where to turn. But we've been using uh, the car-based navigation and Google Maps to navigate both because the other challenge and what's scary using car-based navigation is how do you put in an address of a place when you, when you don't know Japanese? And that's the input system for the addresses. So the other way you can input into the GPS is via phone number but half the time when you put in a phone number, if it's new, it's not in the car yet, so it doesn't exist. And then even when it does, it'll pull up the Japanese name of the place to tell you, this is what I found. Would you like to go here? Uh, now, once you've actually finally set your destination and you're driving, I find the Japanese drivers are quite polite. Uh, they, they let you in, they understand. If you don't know what you're doing, frankly, I think maybe they see a foreigner behind the wheel and they're like, oh, okay, you don't really understand our ways here, and so we'll we'll cut you a little bit of slack. A lot of times people think, you know, particularly coming from America, that the hardest part is driving on the, the left-hand side. And it does really help to have a second person in the navigator or co-pilot seat to help you drive. Um, but if you don't, just keep reminding yourself to the left, to the left, to the left. Uh, and, you know, you'll the, the hardest thing you'll have to adapt to is where the um, turn signals are and where the wipers are. You know, if you find yourself wanting to turn and putting on the windshield wipers, don't feel bad. That happens to all of us our first few turns driving on the other side of the road. Now, some of the roads, they can be a little bit narrow. Um, if you're driving in like the old villages or in the mountain roads and you will have to like yield to other cars, just go ahead and slow down. It's okay. Uh, let the other cars that know how to drive on the narrow roads keep going while you kind of let them go by. Now, coming out of the narrow streets, you'll find a lot of blind corners. Like, you really can't see left or right whether the cars are coming. And so they put up mirrors so that you can look which way. But many intersections you come out of, you're going to have to look in mirrors both directions to see whether it's safe for you to come out. Uh, do be careful of the roads, though. The ones that are a little scary are the ones that have the open drainage ditch on the side of them. There is uh, so much rain here that literally many roads will have an open ditch on the side. You definitely don't want to get your car into that. So uh, stay a little closer to the middle rather than to the left. And then once you're done driving and you want to park, you know, honestly, parking, it, it can be a little bit scary and challenging too because they don't do street parking here. There's no on-street parking. You literally can't park on the side of the street anywhere in Japan. That is not a thing. You need to find a parking lot to park your car in. And there's, for the most part, very little free parking. So you're gonna be paying to park. Uh, and the lots, you know, they may not be English friendly. A lot of the lots, you might take a ticket when you come in and then pay when you go out. That's the easiest. But some of the other ones, they use like cameras or sensors to track your car coming in. So if you park in a parking lot like this that has numbers on the spaces, you find the machine. When you leave, you put in the number of your space and then it will say, welcome 
How much money do we owe? We owe 100 yen. And also, parking can be challenging because in many parking lots, they actually expect you to back your car in. I mean, not all, but many uh, the back in is how you get in, and some may even require you to back in. And this one's a big parking lot, but like supermarkets and things like that, the aisles are so, so narrow that it's really pretty tight to get into those little spaces. So if you're not good at backing your car, you know, you should probably practice before you come to Japan. Now, when you're in an intersection like this, it's a red light and a green light, and that seems pretty simple. But, you know, sometimes there's some other scary things where there will be a red light plus a green arrow going forward plus a green arrow going right. And you're like, what should I do? <laughs> Am I to stop? Am I to go forward? I don't know. And sometimes they also put street lights in advance of street lights. They'll have a street light that'll tell you, oh, this light is just to let you know that the next one up there is red or green. And that can be like a little um, disconcerting the first time you see it because you like you want to stop at the first one until you realize that's not actually the light. If you're driving on the mountain roads, um, the Japanese, while I said they're polite in the cities, can be kind of crazy drivers on the mountain roads. I mean, definitely like the concept of sport bikes, riding a bike for sports or uh, motor car driving or racing. I think a lot of people from Tokyo or Osaka or the big cities, what they like to do on the weekend is drive their motorcycle, their sport bikes on these mountain roads really crazy, like two or three times the speed limit uh, and they'll be passing other cars or passing you. I didn't see any of them crash and burn on my watch, but I have to believe occasionally they do. and. That's a little bit scary too. Now it's also scary about the one-way streets here. There's many streets that they're one way and it's really hard to tell if they're one way. It's hard to tell because they're so narrow that you look at them and you'll be like, that has to be a one-way street. Turn left. But it turns out it's actually a two-way street. And in fact, this street that I'm driving on right now is a great example that looks like a one-way street. There's no lines in it. It's really hard to tell. And it seems about as wide for one car, but this is a two-way street. The other thing that's really confusing are tolls. Um, so there's like this ETC card that you can get, that you can rent from the rental car companies to do electronic tolling, where you just drive through the toll gates. And when you, come out, when you come out the other side, it'll tell you how much it costs, except uh, not all toll roads take it. Some toll roads are cash only, like you still have to pay cash, even though Japan has this ETC thing. Others take ETCX, which is an entirely different ETC thing. Other toll roads, you need to tell them where you're going when you get on the toll road so that they give you the correct ticket. Others, you take a ticket and then you pay when you get to the end. Super confusing. Oh, and on those toll roads, when I say it's by cash, I mean, I mean cash, I mean Japanese yen, bills and coins, not credit cards, not Apple Pay. Have a lot of cash with you when you're driving around, really. And they also do a lot of road construction here where they like to make the roads just like one way of traffic at a time and they have someone out there who signs the traffic. Red light or red flag means stop. If there's a flagger, then if they have a white flag, that means you can go. But if they've got lights, it's not green light to mean go, it's a blue light to go. So red light and flag stop, white flag or blue light go. Um, but overall, if you are coming to Japan and you're thinking about renting a car, hopefully all of this didn't scare you off because I think it's really rewarding. It's neat to get out to the nature and explore a lot of Japan that frankly you just can't if you're only on a train or only on a bus.